Hey, it's the official podcast, episode 270, like, one. Two, 271, yeah, it's a big one, and uh, today we're talking about Dying Light, what do we think, boys? I haven't played it yet. Alright, that is that conversation, <laughs> what do you got, Jackson? <laughs> Enthralling conversation, no, I, I played it a bit, and I thought it was pretty okay, pretty average, pretty shitty, actually, I didn't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> and now that ends the Dying Light 2 <laughs> conversation. <laughs> All right, well, well, wait a minute, I didn't well. give my opinion. Oh, oh yeah, 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 sorry, fucking car. Car. forgot you were here. Yeah, yeah. I also haven't played it. Oh, okay. Hey, <laughs> my man, we have the same opinion. <laughs> I finished it last night, and it was pretty okay as well. It wasn't amazing. <laughs> oh. do, you think, do you think it's a game that will stand the test of time? People are going to talk about it for decades to come. They will talk about how awful the ending is, I think, for sure. That was one of the most bafflingly awful endings I've played yeah, in quite I really some time. Wanted, I, are you told me about how, yeah, are you told me about how bad the ending was? And it just was. so everyone knows, the narrative in general, like, really was shitty for me. Like, I played five hours and the narrative in the game was just miserable. And that's what <laughs> turned me off it. Um, so I'm really Why curious to see what makes, what makes the ending so shit. Uh, I mean, yeah. can I spoil it? Is it? You yeah, know, spoiler problem? warning. Yeah, I spoiler don't give warning for Dying too. All right. So basically, the the whole narrative really starts to fall apart towards the end, but the final section is where it just absolutely goes fucking wacky. So you fight your main bad guy, Waltz, and he's this evil scientist. He he's got your daughter or your sister, and. You have to go through a, five, I think it was five phase boss battle, four or five phase like tedious boss battle where he runs away and then comes back just to clothesline occasionally. So it's really <laughs> long and drawn out. And every time you beat him, he injects himself again. So you have to beat him again doing the same shit every that time. That sounds so like the, the, uh, the Bioshock Joker final fight. boss. Oh, I was going to say Joker fight at the end of Arkham Asylum. It's worse than both of those. But yeah, mm. it, it's similar and it goes on much longer overstaying its welcome. So, like, just even from a design standpoint, the last, like, hour of the game having to do that fight is just not fun. And, the like, the story to get there is so ludicrous. <laughs> I'd have to explain, like, the whole story up to it, but I can just give you the cliff notes at the end. So, basically, it's a game where your choices ultimately don't matter. So, you have choices throughout the game, you make them, and they have no role in, like, the actual conclusion from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. And finally, after you defeat Waltz, he's revealed to you that Mia, the sister you've been looking for this whole time, is his daughter, and you're his son. And he doesn't let you forget. He doesn't let you forget it. Like throughout the whole boss battle, he just keeps saying, "Mia's my daughter," <laughs> over and over and over but again. But yeah, he's son. Why does he? Does he call you son? Does he have like a he, father son moment towards the end? Yeah, he has quite a few of those. But every time you like hit him, he's like, oh, "Mia is my daughter." Does he? Does he also <laughs> scream, "I am the main villain. I am the antagonist." Pretty much. So then after you do finally beat him, Mia comes like hobbling in. She's she's about to die because she needs oxygen and she gives you the GRE key, which is what this whole game's revolved around is this like this piece of technology that's basically extinct and you need it to save Mia. But there's missiles launching at the city as well. And Waltz is like, no, we have to let the missiles hit the city to save Mia. And then <laughs> it, 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 they don't say why. He just keeps saying, but I want to save the city. But I want to save Mia, too. Do I let the missiles hit the city or do I save Mia? <laughs> Even though realistically you could use the key for both. It's not a one-time use thing. We've used it a million times already. So these missiles are coming towards the city. And Waltz is like, I have to let the city die to save my daughter. And then eventually Mia brings us the key and Walt panics. He's like, no, he's going to stop the missile. So he slaps the key out of my hand and it falls into toxic ooze and vaporizes itself. <laughs> <laughs> so then it, so Aiden, the main character, is like, well, dag nab it. And then they just carry Mia back to the hospital bed, put her on oxygen. And we wait as the missiles are about to hit the city with nothing to do. Until our sidekicks, Lawan and Hakan, are like, we'll just blow up the facility and blow up the missiles with it. And he's like, all right, we'll do that. And then save Mia, even though we've established she can't survive now without that key. So they blow up the facility, the missiles are stopped. This is my ending. There's multiple endings. 
Uh, and then we carry Mia outside and she just dies, but they don't show you anything. So they just explain it with text. It says the missiles were stopped. The city was saved. Hakan and Lawan barely escaped with their lives in time. And Mia died a couple hours later. And then Aiden <laughs> what hits the, the fuck? Then Aiden hits the trail again and they show you a brief cutscene of Aiden leaving the city. It was unbelievably stupid. <laughs> like, like to a degree I couldn't have possibly expected. Wait, so the end of this game is literally just text? Yeah. Well, they do have, like, one last cutscene, but they explain the important stuff with text. And the text is what changes via, like, <laughs> what you chose at the end. Oh, my God. Wow. That, so it's like Fallout. Has there, ever, Jesus. has there ever been a game that's actually pulled off the whole your choices matter, uh, you know, selling point? Mass Effect 1 that. and 2. Uh, I really thought those choices played a big role. Yeah, actually. I agree. Mm. Not Mass Effect 1, really, but 2, yeah. 2, well, for Mass sure, you, really get, you get yeah, very different cutscenes for stuff, depending on what you do in 2. Yeah, but the end, the, the ending in 1 is pretty much set, Charlie. Like, you always kill Saren. There's no True. real, like... Chat just anything. gave a good one. Detroit become human. Oh, yeah. That actually... That's yeah, decent. For all his Chat flaws, also gave a really he, bad one. Life is Strange blows and your choices don't matter whatsoever <laughs> in that fucking game. But they hey, um, give, them, I would give them credit. They said Detroit Become Human. That game, I can't think of a better example of a choose your own adventure type game. Well, it actually, it actually did f pull it off. Like it actually, yeah. like your your choices actually did matter in that game. It doesn't matter yeah. about the quality of the choices or the writing or anything. It actually did influence like the game's ending. And stuff, hey man, which I love the I'm talking about. I love the writing. There were that so game. many branching paths in that game. Mm -hmm, I couldn't yeah. fucking believe it. And I can I see like why games classic. like that don't don't work out because it, it would be an absolute logistical nightmare to pull off i think actually giving players freedom of choice and then actually yeah. having it lead to an impactful story but they that's, fucking did it crazy. man they they had two major branching plots and then tons of side plots within them that all change yeah, yeah it was really impressive, impressive. Mm -hmm. i'll add to that the like old school DD &D games like baldur's gates type mm -hmm. stuff and like oh, pillars of eternity back, yeah. where yeah you can like slaughter the whole village and then when you go to a new village they're like aren't you that genocidal mage like leave us alone <laughs> and i love that sort of stuff <laughs> fucking yeah, text to speed cool. uh, not text to speed fucking text-based adventure games used to really be branching as well the fucking lord of the rings text mm -hmm. game you could just kill frodo in the beginning and continue on like nothing happened <laughs> it's like how do you play this game now he's just dead they used to do that. Was shit. Frodo even <laughs> really that important to the journey? You know, think about it. You, you know, he might have been. What with being the main protagonist of the story and all, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but you could have given the ring to anyone else, and it would have been fine. Wasn't the what's entire he, point he, he gave did? it to the hobbits because they could be trusted with it, and they would be unsuspected by Sauron to have it? I think that, Is that what it was. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm going way back. I think he gave it to the hobbits because they were the most like immune to it naturally. Like they weren't mm -hmm. super like selfish and driven by like desire or anything. Yeah, Jackson. Like, just because they, they, they had like Jackson, small fingers. Jackson, just because <laughs> your fucking fantasy world is Game of Thrones, which was super poopy. We'll we'll stick with Lord of the Rings. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A good Game of fantasy Thrones, world, okay? The source material for Game of Thrones is fantastic. Yeah, but Lord but of the Rings was wasn't... never bad. Hold on, wasn't Gollum also a hobbit? And then yes. he got like, Go as no, he no, became no. obsessed no, with... No, he was. He was. He was, he was, he was. A, he was a river He was a river people. They were similar to hobbits, but they weren't <laughs> river hobbits. People? Oh, Wait, I don't know. Was, what was his original name? Schmeagol. Uh, it was Schmeagol. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't a hobbit. It, it wasn't river people, but it was something else. <laughs> what the fuck is river people? <laughs> river people it sounds like a whatever in the Lord of the Rings universe, like what you'd call like the hobbits. Oh, those goddamn river people. Ugh, I don't like him in yeah. my shire. No, everyone, everyone's saying everyone's saying he was a hobbit, and I no, believe he was a hobbit. He was a hobbit. Was yeah. else. He was I absolutely was a hobbit. According, yeah, they had a whole flashback to, thing with him. He was a hobbit. The Lord of the yeah, Rings fandom, fandom wiki. He was one of the three early hobbit types. Yeah, hobbit. Exactly. It wasn't like an exact hobbit. It was like some <laughs> kind of a hobbit? Uh, like yes, a hobbit hobbit types. Types. hobbits. Yeah, but no. Okay, his race is a hobbit. Yeah, Charlie, he's his race is hobbit. listed under uh, hobbits, yeah. though. He's yeah. a so, hobbit. so Charlie, I just branch. looked at I just looked it up. River folk are a sect of hobbits. Okay, yeah, yeah. if that's right, what right. you're thinking. Okay, okay, so I was, I was Gandalf, of. Isn't that like okay? I'm gonna go to the people who's like one example of ever having touched the ring turned into a psychotic, schizophrenic little weasel <laughs> who's obsessed with the ring. I should trust yeah, them. Yeah, wait, with what? It. 
yeah, why would why would he actually give it to the hobbits when the only one that went insane? Well, not the only one, but the one most recent one that went insane from it was Smeagol, who was a river folk hobbit. Well, didn't he give it to Bilbo originally? And Bilbo was like, no, yeah, Bilbo good. took it off Smeagol, didn't he? Like yeah, Smeagol no, lost it. And yeah, then... Bilbo got it. From yeah, Bilbo. Smeagol Bilbo used it. it throughout the entirety of the Hobbit, and he was like, yeah, I'm good. And then at the no, in Lord, at well, the no, end, in Lord of the Rings, he went <laughs> bad shit and was like, take it from me because it sucks, right? Yeah, and then he uh, fucking hunted yeah. Frodo down and <laughs> tried to take it again. <laughs> that was still one of the first jump scares I ever experienced. Yeah, when, he's, oh, when he yeah. does the face. Yeah, when Frodo has the ring and then Bilbo out of nowhere just goes, ah! I think I think that <laughs> face photoshopped onto porn is one of my favorite things I see on the internet. It makes me laugh yeah, every time. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I think I think you think Smeagol was a river person because like the one scene that he is in when he's when he's Smeagol, he's on a river in a boat eating fish. No, they, he really yeah. is called like river folk, but yeah, he's the store branch of Hobbit. Mm. It's fair. Mm. fair enough. <clears throat> Either way, bad choice for this to be the steward of a ring. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. Who, who would you have given the ring to then, realistically? Sam oh, the tri- Just give it to no. Samwise Gamgee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I was going to say the tree people. They could be pretty trustworthy, right? They're just trees. Oh, the trees, but- yeah. I guess they technically couldn't wear it. Exactly. They can't be, mm. you know, taken advantage of by its powers. Why? They could put it on a twig. That's just growing <laughs> out of them. Oh, God. Can you imagine a giant invisible tree? I'm fucking up so bad. <laughs> oh, that'd be fucking rough. Yeah, that'd be OP. <laughs> what would you do? You can't stop that. Yeah. Oh, but but then like in the journey to go to Mount Doom to toss the ring into the lava, they'd immediately burn on the way up. <laughs> oh yeah. They'd get nowhere close to it. <laughs> That's the funny part too. Is there only one volcano in all of that lore? Like the planet. Why didn't they just go to one that was more easily accessible, like in Iceland or something? Had to be the one that it was made in. Because there'd be yeah, no like, story. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Wait, is it a... <laughs> that which Middle is Earth? made can only be unmade at the place it was made or some shit like that. Yeah, that's where it was forged. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, but So it's called Middle Earth. Is it? Is it on Earth? Uh, I don't know. Let's use context clues, Jackson. Yeah, well, I, I would imagine it is. I don't think it's <laughs> on Saturn. How does that work? How does that work? What do you mean? No, Jackson means is it like Earth continents? Like, is there an Africa in Lord of the Rings? Yeah. And like a is Germany? there Iceland? <laughs> Why Iceland? Well, because Kai said Iceland I don't know. before. <laughs> I just, I just threw that out there. I don't know. Jackson, Do they have polar caps? you might not have heard of this before. It's an incredible literary device and technique. It's even used in movies. It's called fiction. You can make mm, stuff up. That. Well, then why, why would it still be Earth then? I don't know. <laughs> how about how about when you watch like the Justice League? <laughs> why, why do they fight on Earth? That's weird, isn't it? There's no real they Batman. Can, yeah. I mean, they should fight in space. That yeah, so much cooler. They should fart on, fight on <laughs> Zemacron Six. Ow. They should fart on there too on Zemacron Six, a planet just like Earth but not Earth, so Jackson doesn't get confused. I'm not confused. <laughs> I just think it's dumb. If you're gonna set it on Earth, at least put it in America or New York or something. Frodo has to travel around <laughs> continental <laughs> U.S. <laughs> yeah, Frodo Is wakes Bilbo up gonna be like an Uber driver in New York. Yeah. Frodo wakes up in a swing in the back seat. Cramped New York apartment, and he's constantly complaining that working at Starbucks doesn't pay his rent. And then one customer tips him with a ring. He's like, "Sir, you forgot this." <laughs> And it Frodo's was Sauron a, in a big trench coat and a hat. <laughs> Frodo's an immig- a, a first family immigrant <laughs> from Hobbiton. This sounds terrible. Hobbiton? <laughs> Hobbiton. It just sounds more like a Transformer. Sounds cool, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my lord. I'm just saying, the Battle of the Five Armies would have been much cooler if it was in Wyoming, US. Why Wyoming? The of, I don't know, in the middle <laughs> of America... <laughs> Wyoming would be a pretty cool location for a five army war. Mm-hmm. It's pretty empty. <laughs> and then the U.S. Army shows up as well. <laughs> the of the six yeah, let's just do that in real life. We'll have the Chinese Army, the American Army, the Russian Army. 
That's not as what, fun. What was that dude who, who, who was riding the dragon? He was like, no one man can kill me. And then he just gets drone struck. <laughs> 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 yeah, I remember. I remember President Bush was reading that book to those kids, and he, one of his fucking secretaries leaned over and said, "Mr. President, we've gotten the Nurgles. They've escaped from the darkness. They have the One Ring." <laughs> he couldn't believe it. The orcs are messing at our borders. Yeah. <laughs> we need to send our finest riders. <laughs> They're constructing an <laughs> army of trolls these. and orcs. <laughs> they've they've armored them up, sir. They're fighting for Sauron. Light the fires so Canada can see. <laughs> Get the drones. <laughs> oh boy oh god that's so fucking dumb yeah that sounds like the plot to Dying Light 3 uh, yeah so it's much more cohesive so is the first game better from? then like is the second game even worth getting I really like the gameplay in the second game but okay. I would say overall the first one's probably better yeah, yeah cause why I... is the first one better if the first one also had a shit story but worse gameplay hmm I, oh, no, I, I remember. Question. I'm asking why is it why is it better? Oh. Why is the first one's better? Well, because the story wasn't nearly as bad as in Dying Light One. It was shitty, but this was insulting. And the good thing about Dying Light One is it didn't put it front and center. Every mm -hmm. single thing you do in Dying Light Two brings up like exposition, so you're constantly throughout every mission having to be inundated with bad writing. They put so <laughs> much <laughs> emphasis on this terrible story, and it's so long. Like some of these cutscenes. And calling them cutscenes is a service. A yeah, it's bit just of a like disservice. close ups of faces. Yeah, it's just close up of faces talking at you. Mm. And it's so long. There's so many of them. And if the story was good, it'd be great. But it's just so bad. So it just really highlights its flaws. The old Ubisoft trick. Yeah. Don't do a good cutscene. Just have people like, talking to the camera. Yeah, that, that, tr that like thing is so annoying to me it's because it's just basically one step up from like a visual novel why not like exactly mm -hmm. it's it's just not engaging just having a close-up of a person's face and like their com their lips are just communi computer computer animated it's supposed to be immersive mm -hmm. it's supposed to be like you are this person and you're in this cutscene. i don't i don't know about you guys but i prefer the exact opposite i want to play as characters i don't want to play as me in these situations yeah, oh yeah agree. for sure for yeah. sure i hate that I want to be like this random person or creature or robot. I want to be engaged in a character, a, a well-written yeah. character that was fully realized, not fucking yeah. like pretending. Like that a, I'm a good, a good example, a good example of that that also blurs that line we brought up earlier. Mass Effect, like Commander Shepard, is a bit plain because he's supposed to be the player, but he still has not only a personality, but one that you can mold to your taste mm -hmm. and you yeah. can make him look however you want. You can have him look like yourself or Walter fucking white. Like it doesn't matter. But the whole point is that he's written that he both represents the player and is Commander Shepard. So you can both be like, oh, I'm making these decisions and doing these things. But also I'm Commander Shepard, the badass space captain with my crew doing these missions. Like that's a good uh, that's a good way to do it. But so yeah. many modern games now, it's just you, the player, are now in Call of Duty. It's like I don't want to be there. I'm boring. I've never done any of this shit. <laughs> don't put me there. It sucks. Yeah, yeah, it's a very annoying trope. Yeah. They're going I farther agree. than that even now. I don't know if you guys played Forza, the late what was it called? Forza Five Horizon, I think. You boot the game I'm up and they have this did. text to speech thing, and it just it says your name. It pulls it from your Xbox user um, page, your yeah, game, real game name text, and last yeah. name. And so you log in, it's like, welcome to Forza Horizon, Kaya Orsan. It's like, ah, don't, don't break immersion <laughs> here. I'm a Kaya. I'm the badass, like, racer who, like, flies this car for 500 fucking yards <laughs> yeah. off a cliff. To be fair, there's no real there's no real narrative or choices in those kinds of games, so I don't really... That's the worst the part, issue. though. They still have cutscenes and shit, and it's so insufferable because you cannot skip them in Forza and I suspect that's because they have like advertising deals with all the car manufacturers yeah. who mm -hmm. told them hey look I don't want you I don't want your players skipping the scene where we're presenting our new Mercedes you know it's really insufferable like this doesn't need a fucking story just let me buy cars and race I mean they did I'm that same I'm shit gonna, in uh yeah. in the newest NBA right where they would like you'd be playing a game and the broadcasters in the game would go this is brought to you by Snickers and you couldn't skip it I oh, remember yeah, that, right? that oh. whole advertisement thing, yeah. Yeah. Like unskippable ads in a full sixty dollar game. Yeah. And then it was like they tried those, to make those it were, real. Those were like genuine ads. No, those were genuine ads. Yeah. Like they would play genuine ads like on TV. Yeah, like that TV sounds ads. even yeah. 
That sounds even worse than what like racing games do, because at least then the point is I get to drive the fucking thing, right? Mm-hmm. If it's yeah, just no, a Snickers it's, ad, like, I, it makes I'm not sense playing in, with the it Snickers. It makes sense in Forza. <laughs> no, it makes sense in Forza. Like you, the only advertisements in there, as far as I know, well, not they're not even advertisements. You just you just drive branded cars. That's basically it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like fine for a racing car game. That makes sense. Do you remember when fucking mm-hmm. Mercedes had a brand deal with Mario and their cars got in Mario Kart? Yeah, oh, no, I don't remember that. I, I don't remember, remember that shit. I think it was Mario Kart <laughs> Seven had Mercedes in it. We look that up real quick. Yeah, I remember God, now that you're saying. Yeah, it's, what, what came of that? They never did that again. I it was okay. It, it was really work. It was Mario Kart Eight on the Wii U, and it had Mercedes Benz DLC. And you could download little Mercedes the cars fuck? for that them to ride awesome. around in. <laughs> yeah, that sounds so cool. I, <laughs> no, I but they this. look really yeah. dumb. Like, look at that yeah, image. They look really they cartoony. Look, yeah. oh, they man. look poorly textured. They're, they're just gray blobs on an otherwise like cartoony, <laughs> colorful screen uh, video game. Yeah, I know it's it was so out of nowhere and they have to like be cart shaped. <laughs> so they're just sitting in the entire like <laughs> middle of the car. <laughs> I think I about you that. all the time. I thought you meant like how Teslas have like playable games within within the Tesla. Like you can boot it up on the Tesla screen or whatever. I thought that's what you meant. Like you can play no, Mario no. Kart in no, the same. No, no. Well, some guy modded his, um, I think it was a Mustang to play Doom. Have you guys seen that video? No. That's another video. Anything. Anything. That's another video I think about all the time. So that was back when the fad was like you put Doom on everything. Like they put mm-hmm. him on like calculators and like anything they could. So one guy took his fucking car and took the interior like tablet display and put Doom on it. And the way that he controlled it is he would fucking floor the pedal to move forward in the game and use the steering wheel to turn. <laughs> it was fucking good. He would honk the horn was to he, shoot. Like it was so was pretty cool. cool. It was fucking funny. Yeah. Was his kill count higher in game or in real life at that point? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, was it still a functional car? <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently. It's at the bottom of the Hudson River. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I can't wait for self-driving cars, man. I can't wait to just plug yeah. in where I want to go and then take a nap or watch a movie or something. I don't I I don't know. I don't like leaving that choice up to like uh algorithms or robots or anything. Not not even from a factor of like it could be hacked or anything like that. Just like computers can make mistakes and it can interpret like road signs or road markings differently mm-hmm. or even GPS can screw so can up sometimes. People. Yeah, see, yeah, I, no, I, I, I trust the computer way more than people because like, yeah, a computer every now and then might misinterpret something, but usually it's fail safe is going to be OK, you know, stop or do something safe to get out of this scenario, whereas people, they just go batshit insane and swerve and try to yeah, do all sorts of still- stupid shit. There's still some good upsides to like having a human make decisions because I think there was like a troll who was going around on highways and he all he would do was um, he would modify the speed. Uh, uh, man, I'm having a break, a brain fart. The thing, the uh, speed sign. Sorry, limit. Where he would turn like a sixty into an eighty mile zone, and the robots, uh, I guess the fucking camera lens on the Teslas would just not even question it they would just see the 80 and drive 20 miles above how, the speed wait, how limit did he, how did he do that could he speak car, could he speak car could he speak tesla no no like he, he literally no jackson Teslas? he literally just went up to a speed sign and he used some paint to turn the six into an eight. Oh, that's it oh, and the okay. tesla would well, yeah, see that using its cameras <laughs> like that that's how easy those things are to trick you know well that that would that, yeah, that wouldn't even that that would probably trick most people driving yeah. past those it absolutely I, true, I would yeah. believe it i don't i don't even look at speed limits i just kind of drive however fast i feel is comfortable <laughs> you make your own rules. Yeah. yeah. I, I think a but lot I of people he... drive like that. I think a lot of people don't care about speed limit signs at all. They just get a feel for the road they're on and drive as fast as they want on what it. Are ta- what are you talking about? People yeah. don't like getting speeding tickets usually. But how many people actually obey speed limits? Like realistically. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I, I undersold the story. The the headline says Tesla autopilot gets tricked into accelerating from 35 to 85. <laughs> 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 that is, that's a fucking problem if you're doing that in like a residential neighborhood <laughs> if it went from 35 to 85 wouldn't it give you like that's absurd 
<laughs> it's like a roller coaster by that point. Holy shit. <laughs> Imagine being in that car. You don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> you spill your Just wine like, everywhere, yeah. About to fucking take off. The engine explodes. Oh my god. <laughs> a fucking limb launch system from Roller Coaster Tycoon was put in there. Also, what are they going to do? Where did the... A while back, there was this whole bioethics discussion. You guys remember, like, if a Tesla cannot avert, there's going to be a crash. The computer has to calculate, okay, who am I going to hit? This old granny or this lady with a stroller and a baby in it? I feel like right? there's not enough time for it to make that decision. Yeah, it doesn't... So I don't know if it calculates the it does. Them. I don't know if it... Does it calculate the trolley problem every single time? Yeah, I mean, that's what they're trying to discuss. I so think that they're they're having so issues where, like, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, there is. Yeah. And that's what they're trying to decide. Like, OK, how do we weigh the pros and cons of, like, who gets to live here? How is this robot? AI I, just, I, don't think you, I, don't, I don't think you should do it at all. Like, if, if it's a baby, like, if the car sees a baby, target pretty much anything else. But apart from that, it should just be, I feel like it should just be random. I think it should be a point system. So, <laughs> like, a random number generator. <laughs> well, no, like, no, a, like a human that's point. That's where it starts getting creepy when it starts assigning value to human no, lives. No, no, no. So it just pulls up the report cards. It's like, yeah, it's, kind of fail history. It's, history. it's perfect. It's a point that's system. So, you try to get the highest score possible if you're going to crash. So, old people are worth like 100 points, a baby's worth zero. I don't know, a pregnant woman's worth like 10. And then like, you know, you, you assign points. So when it's going to crash, it's like, okay, what's the highest score I can get? So if it sees like a group of elderly people versus a group of children, it's going to be like, oh, the elderly people are high points. Hit them. I think it's flawless. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it gets, that begins to start getting creepy when, yeah. when it's starting to assign value to people based on criteria. I, I don't necessarily think it is because I think that's what people are going to do regardless. Like we get creeped out when we go, oh, the computer is tallying our worth. But if you were in that position, you would absolutely have to do that. You'd have to go, you who am have, I going to kill? Have time. You wouldn't have time. Uh, maybe in like a trolley situation where you got time to like take into if, account. If things. my control, if my car has lost control and I'm barreling towards either a senior center or a daycare, I know which way I'm <laughs> swerving my car. <laughs> Like you're, trying to out, you're, you're trying to figure out the way to somehow target both. I'm going to drift <laughs> race into it. <laughs> Puts it in reverse, drives into the this, this fucking daycare too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm with Jackson. I don't trust these fucking robots, man. Also, I think I vaguely remember like this one. Somebody did a study and apparently the AI isn't even that good at the de detecting certain um, like features on some people. Like apparently... They're not good at detecting black people, the cameras, <laughs> oh, especially yeah. in like dark situations and, and like the evening and shit. So I don't know, homie, I'd rather like I make the decision if someone's going to run someone over, not to say AI. Well, I mean, really, we just need to keep user control at some level at all times. Like I should be able to at any point, you know, yes. steer the car or yeah. hit the brakes. Yeah, there should always there should always still be someone behind the wheel and actually like you know, watching yeah. everything to make sure that it's still, you know, going functional. Yeah, that's that's how the uh, isn't that the how the only guy who died from autopilot died because he just wasn't watching and then he freaked out. You know, you're talking about right. the guy that hit the, the dude crossing the street who was wearing like pitch black clothing going across like a non walk section in the middle of the night. Right? No, I thought I was talking about the guy who was watching Harry Potter and then his Tesla <laughs> slammed him. <in. laughs> We talked about this on the show. He was Wait, he was watching he was watching Harry remember. Potter in his autopilot Tesla, and then he freaked out because he thought he was going to hit a truck, and then his freak out actually caused him to hit the truck, and he died. I he don't like freaking uh, freaking out about like <laughs> skipping the movie or something. <laughs> like he was trying to pause the movie before like getting to the actual issue. I yeah, don't remember we that at we all. talked uh, we talked about this on the show. He was watching Harry Potter. And he like thought remember. he was going to hit a truck that was entering the road. So he flipped out and tried to like correct. But that's actually what got him killed. And like mm. he his Tesla went under the truck and like decapitated him. Jesus. Oh, yeah, fucking. we talked Jesus. about this a long time ago on the show. This happened like four years ago. I don't remember this at all, but uh, like it sounds believable. Yeah, I definitely believe it. Yeah, I, there's I just found the yeah. article on The Guardian. Yeah. But what's the one you were talking about, Charlie? I don't think I heard of that. There was the uh, Uber driver. He was using a self-driving car. And in the middle of the night, someone crossed the street, I think with their bicycle. Mm. And he had it on like full autopilot. He wasn't like 
engaged with it or anything, so he was just kind of kicking back. It was on autopilot, and it just blasted that guy and killed him. Damn. And then they released the footage of it. it like, even as a normal driver, you couldn't really see the person. So, mm-hmm. like, they came in pitch black. They had black clothing on, and they, like, what crossed. Was he trying think, to just be a like, ninja? Why is he, like, I, I don't <laughs> dress that he's way He's trying to get himself killed. Night. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Ambush the Tesla. And then, yeah, the autopilot just didn't pick them up, like, at all. So it just ran them over, and then the guy, like, had to assume control and stop it, because otherwise I think it was just going to keep going or something. <laughs> that was going to drive to the nearest <laughs> police station. <laughs> direct control. <laughs> it was going to drive to the nearest police station, turn itself in. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find that. I, I think that's I think that's like one situation where the car would actually have the advantage because they have like night vision cameras and you stuff would, like that. You would think, right? Yeah, but clearly yeah. not. Lidar and shit. But uh, <laughs> do you think people are gonna jailbreak their cars and like install third party pirated like oh absolutely yeah, like, software? Dude. Fuck yeah. yeah! Yeah, here it absolutely. is. Raffaella was watching television on her smartphone when the Uber self driving vehicle struck a lane who was crossing a road in Arizona. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's definitely happened. I'm not surprised. And it would definitely happen in the future as well if we continue to go down that path. It's just like the price of the technology, really. We just got to figure it out. They were in charge of monitoring the company's self-driving car when this happened, too. So I imagine that really set them back quite a bit. (laughs) Maybe it was a competitor. Like BMW just sent out a fucking (laughs) ninja dressed in black to kill himself. (laughs) It was like a corporate suicide bomber, basically. <laughs> Turned himself up from the car. Anyway, uh, Andrew, is there anything you want to talk about today, particularly about maybe fit bodies? God, do I want to talk about so much. I want to take this oh, moment, yeah. this next, I don't know, four minutes to just talk about everything that's been on my mind. The first thing that wakes me up in a cold sweat, it wakes me up at night. I'm screaming. I clench my sheets. I, I fucking rattle the earth with my death knell is knowing that people aren't training their bodies. I don't understand it. Disgusting. You Ugh. were put on this earth. You were given a mortal shell. I don't care if you believe in a soul, a spirit, an afterlife, or whatever. It doesn't matter. You were given a physical form, and you don't push it to its limits. You don't take it to its maximum. You don't treat it right. Sickening. Are you insane? Well, maybe it's because you don't have a gym. Maybe it's because you don't have... The knowledge on a good workout routine. Maybe it's because you don't know how to do a good PPL split. You can even look that up. Well, FitBot is here to help you. They've got an algorithm to use data to create and adjust a dynamic fitness plan just for you. It's not about comparing yourself to others with FitBot. It's about working to become a little better than you were yesterday. And FitBot is going to make it easy for you to do. Common New Year's resolution is to get in shape. Did you drop that? It's February. I hope you didn't drop that because everyone should be getting in shape no matter what. It makes you feel good. It lets you do more. And FitBod has all the tools to do it. I used FitBod for a while. I check it out every now and then. The thing that I personally love about it, you tell them what muscles you want to hit. Hey, my chest hurts. I want to work back. Hey, I just did my legs. I would like to work my biceps and my upper body instead. You can literally go in and when they give you the routine, tap whatever muscles you do and don't want to hit and they'll change your workouts. It's extremely convenient. And it's only $12.99 a month or $79.99 a year. And you can sign up now and get 25% off of your membership. How? I'll tell you how. You can kick the new year off right and get started on your customized fitness plan with FitBod by going to fitbod.me slash official. They also have tons of body weight routines if you don't have access to a gym or weights. Very common thing. A lot of college kids feeling that pain. So do it at home. Get 25% off of your membership at fitbod.me slash official. F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash official. But I'm not fucking done. I'm just not done talking about things because you're going to connect to FitBod and you might be in a country. I won't (laughs) name names that goes, no, we don't support free Internet. We don't want you connecting to FitBod. Well, you wouldn't have this problem if you happen to use ExpressVPN. Did you know that every time you connect to an unencrypted network, like a cafe, a hotel, an airport, maybe the gulag you happen to be locked in, any hacker 
on that network can access your data. It just doesn't even take much know-how to do it. A 12-year-old could do it if they did some Googling on how to hack and be leet. Remember that? Leet? That's coming back because hackers are coming Ooh, back. Yeah. That's right. Express <laughs> VPN is going to give you four fun little points on your internet security. They're going to give you an encrypted tunnel, which makes sure that your data is secure. They're going to make sure it's super secure by making sure it takes a hacker a supercomputer to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. And guess what? I don't care how many fucking graphics cards they shill. I don't care how many PlayStation 5s they happen to comp. They're not going to have a supercomputer that can get around this. It's going to be easy to use. All you got to do is push a button on the app to get started, and it's going to work on your phone, laptop, tablet, and more. You got a fucking smartwatch? You can probably get it on there, too. All you need to do is start securing your online data and... Probably more importantly to this modern internet-based world, change your location to access different streaming sites. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, that's so huge. With all those so shows important. out there, the the amount of stuff that's on, like, Japanese Netflix and fucking yeah. British Netflix and, like, I don't know, Tanzania and Hulu, you can't even begin to imagine. Secure your online data and change your location to watch fun content today by going to expressvpn.com slash official E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash official. And you're not only going to be putting our name on your little Express VPN and supporting us, but you'll get three free months, three free months of data and location mm -hmm. oh change. God. Express VPN dot com slash official. What time is it? It's time <laughs> to sign up for FitBod and Express VPN. How did I know that you're asking? I checked my movement watch. Oh, thank Valentine's you. Thank you. Day is right around oh. the corner. I think you will have a sliver of hope, a smidgen of time left by the time this episode airs to get your significant other <laughs> a gift for Valentine's Day. But you're going to know exactly how much fucking time you have when you're wearing a movement watch. No longer will you be that awkward, weird kid where someone looks at you and says, uh, excuse me, do you know what time it is? And you, you fucking struggle with your pocket. And you're like, uh, uh, hang on, I happen to know what time it is. I have my smartphone right. in my pocket. Oh. Uh, 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 and you like fumble around with it. And the businessman that we were just talking to, the <laughs> Fortune 500 company man will say, oh, I didn't think that you would not own a watch. Uh, goodbye. And then he'll ask someone more handsome and more successful than you. No. Movement has tons of incredible looking watches and not just that they've got 18 K fine jewelry pieces, special edition styles like rare ceramic watches, all sorts of great gifts for this Valentine's Day or for yourself. A lot of people single on Valentine's Day because guess what made up holiday designed to sell gifts and chocolates and greeting cards doesn't even matter doesn't exist because you can get yourself something on Valentine's Day. Love Aww. yourself using movement. Mm -hmm. Give yourself self-love so straight from your wrist with this watch. And <laughs> you can also get 20% off of your order. Don't stress about Valentine's Day. Watches are timeless. You like that? You like that? Yeah, I, I do, do too. I do. I like and that. I also I like, like getting 20% off with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash official. Movement is so efficient when it comes to timepieces, they don't even have time to put all the vowels in their name. They keep it short and simple with <laughs> mvmt.com slash official for the most stress-free Valentine's Day gifting yet. MVMT, style shouldn't break the bank join the movement wear a watch so you don't look like you're a kid anymore yeah mm -hmm. thanks to all three of our sponsors for yes. this week's episode fitbod we are and, uh, we are VPN testing and movement we're testing a one ad block to see how that goes hopefully you out there listening People in the chat it's a whole event for them right now they're happy yeah. they're, <laughs> they're like freaking out stoked about in this the Patreon chat, they're like what the fuck's going on well like, how many ads can they do uh, <laughs> We're testing. I, I'm impressed. I'm impressed, Andrew. That was fucking impressive. Yeah, that was oh, that, smooth. Thank you. That was really yeah. easy. I, I enjoyed doing that. I like doing that. No, you're a machine, man. That was fucking. But great. yeah, we are. Yeah, we so are. Uh, we got we the go testing. ahead. We got the go ahead mm -hmm. from the higher ups to put all our ads in one block. We're <laughs> testing it out. We'll see if we can keep doing that. I think it's better for the show's flow. I like it a lot more. Yeah, I yeah. think it would. It would lead to a stop. Uh, you know not stopping conversations to you know segue into an ad rate i think it will definitely help the flow uh interested in seeing what you guys think let us know what you guys think about 
how it affects the episode, if you like it more or less. Yeah. Because that'll help us make that decision permanently. Anyway, thank you to the uh, sponsors for making the show possible, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now for a bunch of awkward silence. <laughs> now we can sit here. We're done. Yeah, yeah that's it. The show's over. <laughs> Now, now watch this flow. <laughs> what are we going to do now? Watch this impressive episode flow as we just sit here. <laughs> Let's just take that in. Let's just bask in it. It was good. Uh, I, well, I should, <laughs> should use that time to go fill up my water. <laughs> no, what we should all do yeah. is all of us should just bring three ads every episode. <laughs> so we have like 12 of them. <laughs> Who needs topics when we have ads? Yeah, just talk about them. <laughs> Well, all of that stemmed from my topic. So who's next? Mm. What was your topic again? I feel like that time like two, <laughs> and somehow went to driving cars. That's yeah. what we need more of. We need more topics that lead to other topics that lead to other topics instead of just having these one-hit news events that we just are so bored talking about. That's what I hate. All or right, here's my chat topic. I hate Jackson. Go. All right. Yeah, what don't we like about Jackson <laughs> Corner? Okay, yeah, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I could, I He's could talk too nice. about this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. his time zone's fucking goofy. <laughs> <laughs> that one yeah. wasn't really a compliment, that was just from the heart. <laughs> yeah, you're actually pretty bitter about the time zone thing. Yeah, your time zone sucks. It's not my fault, I, was, I didn't choose where I was born. What can I do about it? Unlucky spawn, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah just gonna hit respawn find out if i get somewhere better um so more gaming news did you guys see that the acquisition war continues um sony has fought back and they've now bought my beloved studio bungie mm-hmm. creators of halo and mm-hmm. destiny mm-hmm. bound to happen i think really. that's a really baffling buy though because bungie has made one game for the last eight years yeah but it's also extremely successful true but yeah, how but much did 3. they six 3.6 billion dollars. Yeah, valuation is pretty insane. 3.6 billion for one successful game. That's I, like wow, you know. From what I from what I hear Destiny brings in like 600 million dollars each year. So That's that would good. take that would take what? Roughly insane. 6 7 years to recoup its losses. Yeah, but like think about it. Think about Microsoft's recent acquisition with Activision for eighty billion, and that's going to take like well, fifty years. No, no, it's not, no, no, not because not well, it absolutely is. No, but but Activision no, Blizzard make the even highest the, selling games of no, every no, year. Wait, even no, but you got to you got to factor in that that's not all profit or whatever. There's operating costs with those companies, and they have mm. a whole lot of employees. Those ones do, so they have a lot of like they've. They've brought on a lot of costs with with that big acquisition, so it will take a long time to recoup that cost, from what I understand. Yeah, maybe you're right. Mm-hmm. But with Bungie, they do have a, a massive motivated audience with the Destiny nerds, myself included. How um, does, uh, not to interrupt, but how the fuck does Destiny make money? I never see anyone ever buy anything ever from us. the store. I no, never, no, no, no. I literally so, never see anyone with it. Their monetization is so fucking, I've told you how greedy their monetization is. <laughs> but I never but it see anyone. Stop, it doesn't stop me from engaging with it. Is it all Do cosmetics? You actually, it, yeah, it is. Mm. Do you actually buy things from the Eververse, Jackson? Oh, I have from the Eververse before, but not not to the same degree other people do. And also... It's it's not just the Eververse. Like they charge basically an expensive subscription fee because you buy each season. If the season runs every three months, and then there's the full uh, cost for the actual games, like the 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 expansions, which are sixty to eighty dollars, and then that happens every year. So you're basically it's a, it's a subscription game, and on top of that, you have all of the microtransactions, and they're also like. Uh, adding new elements to like where you can buy specific missions within the game now, like specific dungeons <laughs> that you have to pay up for on top of that. <laughs> Jesus so Christ. it is it is it is monetized out of the arsehole. So I can definitely see where the profit comes from. And you know it's an MMO, so people are downright addicted. So they're going to be paying for that. So I can see where it hmm. comes from. And I think it does make sense Sony buying them because they don't have any real like uh, first person shooter studios under their umbrella yeah right? they used true. to have kill zone you remember that kill zone used to be like their big one so for yeah. like resistance yeah. fall of man <laughs> oh yeah i do remember people thought kill zone was gonna like be a true halo competitor i remember that yeah now it's so goddamn dead you guys find it interesting that uh bungie 
created their own Halo killer, basically, with Destiny. Like, Destiny's pretty much Does that the most truly count, though? Because they shooter. made Halo, so it's like they're just continuing. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. They, did kill, they did kill it, pretty much. <laughs> I think 343 um, Studios killed Halo, if anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Microsoft <laughs> did a board. pretty good job at it. Yeah. So... Yeah, I mean, the acquisition war is ramping up. Who do you guys think is going to get bought next? Because it's definitely not done. I think mm. Nintendo is going to buy... Oh, who was I just thinking about? They're like a like an indie Rare. dev. Uh, I thought you were going to say like Rare. No, I don't think they could afford Microsoft Rare. Microsoft already from... owns Microsoft. Yeah, owns Rare. I don't think oh, they could true. buy it from them. Well, you guys are missing the biggest one, which is... Um... The New York Times bought Wordle. <laughs> oh yeah, four million bucks. <laughs> Let's go. How much, how, how much? Do we know how much they paid to acquire that massive Ooh, one million? Job one million. I think they overpaid. Oh, oh they absolutely. Yeah, did. World well, of, World's going to be dead own. by the end of the month. They absolutely overpaid. Yeah. It's a fun little game though for now. Oh, it's I so it's, it's super run. cute. So apparently, the guy who made it just made it as a fun little time passer for his partner. For his wife. Yeah, yeah it's cute. and and then he was like, "Holy shit! I got to make a million dollars off of goofy little game I just made for my wife and friends." And uh, the game's absolutely going to die because number one, it's kind of a fad. But beyond that, the New York Times has said that it's free for now, so I think they're going to try to make it pay to play. <laughs> Christ, I'm going to need to pay for a, a yeah. Uh, what, what is it? Who, who's Nobody it? in their right mind is going to pay for a single daily one word puzzle game. There's no goddamn way. Well, I well, mean, the, the, also, okay, it's not the proprietary tech. Isn't... You can just go on the Google App Store and buy one of, like, oh, no, sorry, you can just download one of, like, a thousand Wordle clones. Uh -huh. It's not hard. It's not hard to find a, yeah. a, a clone. Yeah, it's a very simple game to code. Like, anybody who's taught himself coding for, like, half a day could make it. But also, you know, people who pay for the New York Times, they don't, they're not just going to pay only for that one game. I assume it's just going to be part of their newspaper. Well, yeah. It's, it's going way, to fucking die when yeah, they yeah. do it, I'm telling you. I don't think any of us here fault him for taking that decision, but <laughs> oh, no. I think he should have absolutely, no, absolutely. taken that, that, that payment. Oh, fuck no. Why, why would you stand on principle? I, I don't, I've don't. i seen nobody mad at him. Like, well, you sold it to the New York Times, so could you? Do you not have any integrity? Like, no. We, why, have, why three, <laughs> we have three fucking ads per podcast episode. There's no way we could disagree with his decision. <laughs> My good I would sell this money. podcast to the New York Times in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the next Four big acquisition. Maybe that's the next yeah. big acquisition. Ubisoft buys the official podcast of oh, like a fuck. world I'd, first. I would, I, I, oh my god, that'd be awful. We'd, we'd become a yeah, Ubisoft we could original. only talk about right. Ubisoft games. Oh lord, we'd be yeah. depressed alcoholics. Well, I was thinking the opposite. They like, make us crunch. No, the Ubisoft <laughs> uh, buys our podcast in order to just be like the first in the industry to have like a podcast like uh, in their belt on UPlay exclusive or some shit. Yeah, for all three users. Oh, on yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, that would be awful. Well, uh, no, it'd be pretty good for us. I, I think they'd give us a lot of leeway and they'd just let us release the same episode 500 times. <laughs> if we, Basically, like, that's what they do If with we games. had to get Why bought not? by a game company and become their official podcast, which one would you want? Hmm. Ooh, double just, fine, because I really liked him. If that's one game yeah. to talk about, though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, so no, it would just be the Psychonauts would... podcast every week. <laughs> yeah, does that mean we would only be allowed <laughs> be to talk about their games forever? Yeah, so it. so we're we're under that contract where it's like you know you have to only say th good things about the company and you can't mention competition explicitly. So we would only be able to talk about their products and their games and talk about them in a good way and bring no other on related topics? guests. So we can't make fun this of is... self-driving cars or nope. what? We just, no, just them. Then, then none. I'd rather just quit. <laughs> That's awful. You don't no want to make a hundred million dollars a year if we got bought by like Sony or Nintendo and they were paying us that. The fuck? Why are they paying us that? Because they're a big hey, company. Hey, hey. And we're cool. They realize our power. Yeah. <laughs> they see our influence. They need to lock us down immediately before we move to their competitors in, in an entirely like separate industry. I mean, I guess Nintendo to would be the easiest i don't know you'd have to go with a publisher rather than a game studio yeah. because mm -hmm. otherwise like, no I, I, don't know. I already know who i'm going with i'm going with well i guess now it's sony but i said i was gonna go with bungie because i i like destiny first of all mm. and also they their employees all of their employees now make like a million dollars a year because of the sony deal oh nice which is insane they, they, part of the sony deal part of that four billion that they paid for bungie is like uh employee retention uh, deals where 
the employees get like a million dollar payout. So they they look after their employees over there. So I, I'm choosing there. I'd pick Nintendo. I just I do. If, Go ahead. R- really, Andrew? Are you going to sit here for yeah. hundreds of episodes and suck Pokemon's dick? <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. That's yes, that would that would hurt. But I think with Nintendo, you would never run out of topics. There will always be a yeah, game by them true. you haven't talked about. Yeah, but all or... the topics are like bullying them now. Like we make fun of them constantly. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that anymore. So yeah. really you have no topics. I don't know. I guess I'll just say everything really sarcastically. I love this game. Like wink at the camera oh, yeah, the whole okay. time. And the executives aren't going to pick up on that and fire you. <laughs> no, they don't <laughs> listen to it. They're not cool. They, they send you a nice bonus for it. They don't, they don't understand how business works. They, don't, they, don't they wouldn't know. <laughs> they wouldn't know at all. They think I'm being genuine. I'm just really excited. <laughs> like, Andrew really to kill loves you. Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he never shuts up about it. He's got to love it. Yeah, he's our best employee. <laughs> uh. Wait, no, but do we... I, I actually want to know what the predictions are for the next big acquisition because I think that's... It's going to happen soon and I want to know. I would wager a guess that the next one's going to be... Like a big indie publisher, maybe like Super Giant or something, getting bought for like a crazy valuation. You know what? I'm actually going to call this now. I believe Devolver Digital is going to get bought by Microsoft. Oh, they buy like the entire. That'd yeah, be big. They, I, I, I feel that in my bones. I feel Microsoft is going to take all of Devolver Digital. Wait, what? What do they actually get from that though? Because I don't think Devolver actually owns any studios right no they just publish yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah so they're not really buying anything there no, they're, buying they're not the buying publishing. ip yeah. they're not yeah but they already have a publishing wing so no, there's no they, point in that. they want more <laughs> <laughs> they don't get anything from the developer deal <laughs> they get the they get devolver yeah that's exactly why they'll do it you're right yeah <laughs> they don't get shit from it <laughs> no they, one would expect can. it <laughs> no i i don't think that'll happen i think no. like small indie studios yeah like Supergiant is an indie studio, so they did Hades and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I could see that happening. Yeah. I don't expect like a giant valuation or anything, but it could happen. But I, I think there's going to be some really big ones coming up. Like I w- I'm interested in seeing if Microsoft buys Take Two. Like if they get GTA exclusive, that would be, oh, be so expensive, huge. though. I don't no. know if they can yeah. afford that. They just dropped 80 million on Activision. Yeah, you do not understand how much money Grand Theft Auto makes. Not as much as Activision. Less, less than 80 yeah. million for sure. What? 80 billion. 80 Stop billion. saying 80 billion. billion. <laughs> yeah, sorry, billion. It's billion, billion yeah. yeah. Mm. Less than 80 billion. True. Dude, that's no, so absolutely. much money. I was just looking up because I was curious to see if anybody would even, or if they could buy Epic Games. And apparently, even Epic Games is like below 20 billion in value. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, so, how, how do you actually like? They don't. They have to agree to the the selling price. Obviously, it's not like Microsoft can just go in there and say, "Hey, this is above your market cap." You have to say yes. Basically, they can't do that, can they? It has to be an agreed upon price, which means negotiations can take it up even higher. Right. Yeah. Uh, I would think so. That's my prediction. Yeah, I feel so. like someone's gonna buy at least like a majority share in Epic Games because that's like. They are the biggest engine at this point. Tencent already owns the majority, right? Mm, I, no, I Tencent so. does not own the majority, no. Because I do know that Tim Sweeney was bragging about that fact, that they do not, in fact, own the majority. I think <laughs> Tencent owns like 50, 48% or something like that. I wonder about a significant Valve, chunk. maybe. Ooh, maybe it would make sense Valve for course? one of them to buy Valve. I know, no one can buy Valve. super expensive. Val, you got to remember, Valve owns Steam. Well, yeah, no, shit, yeah, that's all they own at the moment. Well, they, <laughs> <laughs> but, they, well, they also have all their games as well. Well, yeah, but they, what games? No, none of them have been made. Well, well no, so, okay, Valve is a lot bigger than just, you know, Valve. They have their games, they have their VR, they have the Steam Deck coming out, they have Steam. Yeah, they do have a lot of property. They have a lot of property and products, so buying yeah, but them it's, a, would be, it's just hardware. It's hardware but, and But that's Steam. stupidly expensive, is my point, because you're not just buying Steam or just buying their game catalog. You're buying all this stuff they own. Yeah, I still think it would be less than, like, buying Nintendo. Well, Nintendo is the same thing. Nintendo has all their hardware and all their fucking everything. You know, the difference is mm. like when you buy Bungie, they just have Destiny. Or if you buy oh, no, Take Two, they just have Grand I'm, Theft Auto and Red Dead. Yeah, no, I'm measuring everything by the Activision deal, really. Yeah. I think that's the most 
the benchmark. I, I don't think anyone could buy Valve. I think Steam is so massive that no one could foot that bill. I don't think anyone would buy Valve either. Yeah. I think it's just too big. Plus, even if they could, I don't think Valve would sell because they pretty much have like a stranglehold yeah. on PC gaming. Like the competition, the closest ones, Epic Games. Which yeah, has a isn't, shit rep. isn't Gabe Newell the only gaming billionaire because he owns Steam? Uh, that's a good question. Well, what do you I have mean? no idea. Gaming yeah. I'm sure there's other gaming billionaire. Surely. But hey, what do you mean gaming billionaire? So Gabe Newell has a net worth of like 1.7 billion. And I think he's the only person in gaming who's over a billion dollars because of Steam. We had Notch on the show. I'm pretty sure Tim Sweeney is yeah, filthy yeah. rich, oh, right. too. Well, what are you talking about? No, the, yeah, all I these guys who own these companies are. <laughs> but, they, but they're in the hundreds of millions, not billions. I thought Tim Sweeney was no. way rich. Uh, dude, Tim Sweeney's net worth is like nine billion, apparently. Really? Shit. Yeah, he's yeah, fucking the, the, rich, wait, bro. The richest one is the ten cent. Um, oh yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong about ten okay. cents. I I had my facts mixed billion. up. I was wrong. Then it isn't ten cent though. Isn't like gaming only one part of their business? I don't think they're like a dedicated to gaming company. Are they? Wait, they're not. They make like movies and shit too. I think they're no. Just they're technology. They're just technology yeah, in general. They, technology they make yeah. mobile yeah. games as well. They do. They do a lot of stuff. So I wouldn't count them. That's cheating. <laughs> Well, even still, like number seven, Gabe Newell was number seven on this list that I just pulled up. Yeah, so I, I don't know what I was thinking. I said, I've never done this before, but I said shit out of my ass without thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we corrected you for the yeah, first time ever. You guys always correct me. <laughs> yeah. Every time you guys know the true facts off the top of your head. Yeah. The one that Most. blows me away real quick on this is uh, Kim Take Jin, 1.2 billion, the CEO of NCSoft. NCSoft was the, the publisher behind City of Heroes, but they also do like Guild Wars and shit. That blows my fucking mind that NC stuff actually makes money. I actually just well, can't no, believe I, it. I, I, I was going to say, I imagine most of this is these people are smart with their money and they've diversified their portfolios to mm -hmm. include other things. Like that's how they get. Oh, they made Guild be, like, Wars though. Status. Guild Wars was huge. Yeah, Guild, Guild yeah. Wars still well, is huge. Well, so was oh, City and of Lin Heroes. And Lineage. They make Lineage. But these are you, all you need to let City of Heroes go, man. Yeah, well, yeah, but even still, like, how many people do you know that still play fucking lineage? Like, it's not like they're a powerhouse in the modern age. They're like fossils. Yeah, yeah but, but we, don't we also the, don't know a large market. Like in South yeah, Korea, it could be the biggest yeah. game on the planet. It, like I'm saying, it just blows my mind, though, because everything I see them push, like all of their games, they're like really old and I never hear shit about them. So I guess they really just must be popular in South Korea. Most of most of these billionaires are from the Asian market, so mm -hmm. yeah, makes sense. Rest no, in peace, Sorry, buys us. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I honestly think Take Two is next. Just just so I can pretend I'm Nostradamus when it happens. Uh, I think Take Two is next. <laughs> you don't want to be Nostradamus. I'm pretty sure all of his predictions were wrong, except for like a couple. Where he predicted like what, what you wait, have what? for breakfast once or some shit. <laughs> well, that's impressive. But why? Why did he get the like recognition of being I, Nostradamus? I looked this. I looked this up a while ago because I used to always make that reference. Apparently, he just made like the most vague as fuck possible predictions for anything that could fit every situation. So when something happened, they're like, "Well, Nostradamus once said that like." This volcano that exploded, he hypothesized it would happen because he said there'd be a great phoenix fire from a pile of dirt mm -hmm. like 4,000 years ago or some shit. And they're like, yeah, I must have got that's, it right. That's the same fucking way fortune cookies work and all this shit. You keep it specific enough that it's applicable to many things, but vague enough that it doesn't like define details. Like I, I could do it right mm -hmm. now. Podcast listeners out there, you will experience a sudden change, but you won't be afraid. It will actually startle and enjoy you and that's it like it's, it's cryptic <laughs> enjoy you yeah and they have to figure that out they go oh i enjoy this or someone else could be like you know what i i feel joy but i'm in it like it, it doesn't matter you keep it slightly vague oh well, yeah but give it, details we've, we've, there's hundreds we've of people that'll before. happen it's, it's the same as like astrology yeah reading same and stuff shit like that you could you could take astrology readings and shuffle them all around and randomly assign them and they would still apply, no matter what your sign is. It's yeah, it's all uh, on this. Yeah. It's all the same shit. Yeah, but I I don't think anyone trusts uh, fortune cookies. 
For some reason, apparently, Nostradamus has supporters. Nostradamus supporters have retrospectively claimed that he predicted major world events, including the Great Fire of London, French Revolution, rises of Napoleon Bonaparte, Adolf Hitler, atomic bond bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, what? and the 9-11 attacks. And that's he predicted 9-11 and no one took him seriously. <laughs> that's broken clocks, man. That's broken clock theory. Here, I'll do it's it not, again. It's, Andrew, it's not even broken <laughs> clock theory. What they credit the 9-11 prediction to is he said in 1554, iron birds may crash into a building. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's pretty accurate. Oh, I'm convinced now. Uh, that's uh, okay. So he also then predicted uh, hobbyists flying their bets. drones into a window on yeah, accident. Exactly. You can do it with anything. I'll uh -huh. do it again. When the fat woman screams, the child is born. There you well, go. It's not really a prediction. It is. That is a Nostradamus born. style prediction. That's probably something exactly he said. To in, I'm no Nostradamus supporter, but in his defense, his shit like tried to predict like voice crack. What would actually be like maybe something? So another one was like a, uh, like a phoenix from the fire signaling the ash, which is that's Again, nothing. A bunch of fucking nothing. Yeah, but it could yeah, apply to nothing. something general. But what is a so uh, could I say what a fat lady singing would mean or screaming yeah. would mean in terms of someone when being born. space calls out to us, we will regret answering. Yeah, there you, there, go. That's you go. Yeah, that, that's, that's anyone that's could make this of. shit up. It, it doesn't yeah. mean anything. And that's what I'm saying. Mr. Thomas is a fucking fraud. <laughs> Was well, maybe he, that's just what, how we interpreted it. Maybe, maybe he was accurate, but our misinterpretation of his way, but was is he, what has led us. Was he rich and famous in his time, or did like middle-aged women just latch onto him after the fact, like in our day? Good question. I don't know. Well, they didn't know. They didn't know he was right about nine eleven back then. So, <laughs> <or a lot laughs> <of things. laughs> he was a genius. <laughs> he apparently was that, deep into the occult, which I didn't know about. Oh, he talked to Satan? That's what that means, right? It means more like witchcraft and shit, but yeah, kind of like that, I guess. Apparently he was fairly well, wealthy. He had a fortune of about $300,000 yeah. and all this shit, so... Jesus, yeah. in 1500 money? He's, that's like No, no, in, no, in today's surely. money, he had about yeah, $300,000. Oh, oh. inflation. Yeah. That's not that much, right? For, that's, like, that's decent that's not for, like, a for fucking fortune cookie reader. Fortune yeah, no. teller. Oh, I guess cost of living back then would have been really cheap as well. And also yeah, in, in a time like that with stupid wealth inequality. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, maybe I he can't was believe a time made... yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. Our species made like whole ass movies for the 2012 disaster and shit too. For the Mayan calendar events. We yeah, really no are stupid. Shit do you think Nostradamus, uh, like, people would listen to his stories and then make stage plays out of them? <laughs> That'd be cool. That, that would be cool. cool. Yeah. If entertainment was like that back then. Like the Shakespearean rendition of... <laughs> I just keep going back to 9-11 because that's the only one I remember. <laughs> these predictions. <laughs> and that would have been a fun Shakespeare play. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would watch the Shakespeare play on 9-11. I, I would love to see how that plays out. <laughs> uh, it was, what, 21 years ago? It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's been it's long fine enough. enough. It's we, fine. We, we yeah. joke about it. It's fine. Uh, so, new segment. This week in NFTs, do you guys see uh. that Tony Hawk has ruined his reputation? No, not no, Tony Hawk. Don't, don't fucking tell oh. me Tony Hawk. Not oh. the Hawk. Yeah, you guys didn't know? Oh, I know. Not Sorry, Birdhouse. Know. Come on. What did, what did he do? He, he's been, he's been uh, drinking from the same pond as all the others. He's now selling NFTs. God damn. Uh, well, that's why? Sad. You know, unless, somebody, unless I uh, what like, I saw earlier today on social media was apparently some news outlet found out who's behind the Bored Ape Yacht Club. As in, like, they found the real names of the top two honchos at that fucking place, or the scheme. And people are actually mad, and the reply's like, Oh, how dare you not respect their privacy? You're doxing them, you're blah blah blah. It's like, fuck you! You don't get to have your privacy when you're forcing this shit down everybody's throat. I can't go one day without hearing about you and your bullshit business scheme, pyramid scheme. I get to know who you are. It's like, I not at all. Why, 
I feel like it should be a requirement, like to at least know who's behind these projects. Like, I feel like most people should want that because otherwise, it's just very clearly like sketchy, a scam. I th I think it was just the crypto bros and the not even crypto yeah. bros, just like NFT bros and the replies like, "Oh, why are you unmasking our Lord and Savior? Fuck you!" That guy's face should be on every goddamn uh, placard in the city. It's like, hey, it's this douchebag. He, this is this guy. The reason why you can't go two hours without hearing about NFTs. Did Tony Hawk already delete his NFT announcement? Yeah, I don't see yeah, it on it's his gone. Twitter. There's articles about it though. Yeah, it definitely happened. I saw the notice. It was called Last Trick. <laughs> <laughs> that was his last trick before yeah. career suicide. <laughs> God, oh. I, I, it's going to be the full year of this, and I can't wait. I can't wait to see everyone uh, make their announcement about how they're, you know, making an NFT, and then six hours later saying sorry, and I've canceled the NFT. You know what I'm yeah. waiting for? I'm waiting for the fucking recap in those like year wrap up things. So like, you got the fucking YouTube rewind, and they're like, what I was, was just thinking that. What was important this year? Oh, Fortnite and Minecraft and all these fads. I can't wait till we hit the end of this year, and everyone goes, what was big in 2022? Oh, NFTs. Oh God, weren't those stupid? Ha ha. Wasn't that silly? Oh my god, I can't believe we actually thought of those things. Ugh. I, I really hope that by that time we come to our senses. I hope. But I'm not holding out any hope here. I did. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking this is here for the long term now. Uh, god. It's yeah. all just scams. I mean, I think, <laughs> I they're gonna scam. brute force this on us, dude. They're gonna shove it down our throats no. even though nobody wants it. It's so coordinated. It, it, and I, like... I, like I was saying, I don't understand how, why celebrities are doing this and then backing out six hours later. You, you knew what the reaction was going to be. Just stick with it. I think like, a lot of people with it are, so are so technologically inept that they're swept into the idea of it. And then when they see people hate it, they go, oh, I, I guess this is a bad idea. I, I really don't well, think yeah, they understand because this it. Is this is no different than any other like sponsorship deal. You guys remember when back in the day, was it? Yeah, it was Eminem. He would like wear his uh, G-Shock watch, Casio G-Shocks, and he would like find random reasons to bring it up during interviews and just stick it in the camera. <laughs> it's because he was paid to do it, right? But nowadays, I mean, it's not like celebrities. It's the same thing. Their, their manager gets a call. Hey, we have a, this thing we want you to promote. We'll pay you $5 million. Sure. And then they do it on Twitter and everybody shits I mean, on them. And they, hmm? Yeah, we do it, but I said we do they it. don't realize that like, oh, this is different than promoting like a fucking shoe, you know? It's people really hate NFTs and that's the part they don't know, I think. Yeah, well, NFTs are downright scams. I mean, it, I mean, it's absolute technological ineptitude as well, because, you know, for a fact, every single one of these people shilling NFTs has no idea how they work, no idea what's behind them. They, oh, they, don't, oh, don't tell me Richard Karn didn't know what an <laughs> NFT was with his precious Richard line. <laughs> the fuck is I, Richard mean, like, Karn? Well, I mean, Tony it's Hawk, Hawk, fuck you, Tony Hawk is a Borland perfect... From, uh, uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor's Home Improvement yeah. show. Tony Hawk is a perfect oh fucking God. example of this, though. He's a 53-year-old <laughs> man who is only known for pro skateboarding, and he suddenly shows up and thinks he knows about NFTs. He should know like, better, goddammit. No, none of these people could explain it. You could pin any of them down and say, explain to me what an NFT actually is and what it does, and none of them could give you any good explanation. I disagree. I think Tony Hawk's in the labs doing the hard work. Yeah, he probably put it NFTs. together. Yeah. God. Oh, hey, oh something, uh, something I found out recently about NFTs that I, I hope keeps up the trend so it fucking kills them off. Did you know that you can give virus NFTs that you can't delete? What? No, but I yeah. did hear that when you buy an NFT, they can be, you're basically buying a hyperlink, which can yep. just go away at any moment. Really. Oh yeah, so th that's the thing where if you buy if you buy an NFT, you're not buying the image, you're buying a link to it. So if the server yeah. goes down or someone changes it, it's just gone. But the one that I found out about recently that I love is people make fake NFTs, and you can put them into someone's wallet just willy nilly without their consent. There's no approval process. There's nothing. The only thing you need to do to send someone NFTs on that blockchain transaction is make the system approve it. So it doesn't have to be safe. It, it can be malicious. It just has to meet all the checks to say, yep, this is a blockchain transaction. So what people do is they send fake NFTs to other people. And as soon as you try to do anything with them, like move them or delete them or open them, they just steal all your crypto from your wallet. 
<laughs> what? How the fuck does yeah. that even work? It, it's got, it's just got malicious code hidden in it. So if you ever try to do anything with it, it just fucking steals all your NFTs or steals all your crypto. And the reposts on the forums just say, no, hide it. Hide it from your account. Just hide it. Don't ever click it. Don't touch it. Or you lose all your shit. And there's nothing they can do about it because of the protocols yeah. in place. You can't reject the transaction. So it's just sitting in your wallet forever. I hate this shit so much. <laughs> Wait, dude. no, but so I like that a lot. So, okay, can the trolls get on this, please? The 4chan anonymous, whatever the I fuck. I hope this and kills just, the whole system. It's, it's yeah. not even Bandy. really trolls. Like, that's that's genuine, like, actual yeah. crime. Like, I don't well, think well, it'd no, be it's, super it's, commonplace. Well, and I'm it's not really not even from them. I'm just saying, like, spam the NFT bros with, like, big fat dick pics. And, like and it's, gore, it's not you know? even an accountability <laughs> crime either, because the cool thing about crypto is you can't get that back. If yeah, someone goes into your gone. bank account and gives you a fraudulent transfer, you can call the bank and there's legal proceedings and banking securities in place that get you your money back for the most part. Or, you know, le you can go through a legal system with crypto. It's gone. If someone takes your <laughs> money, it is gone. You have no way to get it back if it's crypto. Absolutely no way whatsoever. I guess they'd have to steal it back. <laughs> yeah, using pretty the much. Same methods. <laughs> I hope this genuinely kills the entire NFT system. I hope it becomes nothing but scam NFTs and just ruins the whole thing. Oh, well. Yeah, I never even heard of that. Yeah. There's some rapper that lost like all of his money because of it. Uh, he, <laughs> yeah, he was on Twitter. He's some hip hop artist. And he made a video where he was like, this is fake, this is fake, this is fake, stole $40,000. And, like, it just happens. <laughs> uh, Good. Yeah. They Good. I it. hope they Absolutely. crash and burn. Absolutely deserved. I hope NFTs just become nothing but viruses. <laughs> <laughs> That's the power of the blockchain, Woo! baby. You're never getting that money back. Let's go. <laughs> Did you guys see that, uh, like, Facebook or Meta, whatever the fuck it's called now, is trying to pressure uh, Europe, Europe because, yeah, they, yeah they've, they've banned, like, they can't process Europeans' data anymore because of, like, legislation. So they're saying that they're, they're, they're holding Europe hostage, basically. They're saying that they're going to remove Facebook and Instagram if they Dude, don't Facebook like, is in a lot of trouble, especially because of uh, some updates in the iOS store or, or the, sorry, the operating system you can now... I don't know, those of you who have an iPhone, they'll have seen that little pop-up that says, ask app not to track my data. That apparently really fucked Facebook. Oh, because yeah. people can just tell it not to track their apps. user data or, or their yeah, like habits and apps. shit. Facebook lost, what was it, $250 billion in value? Yeah. Like in a single week. 25% of their value. Not in a single week, but yeah, you know, it came out last week is what I meant to say. Um, yeah, they dropped by yeah, 25%. That, that's so much fucking money for them to lose over one thing, just one app, tell, uh, one phone telling them I, not to track. I mean, it definitely that that definitely like impacted it a lot. But there's a lot going into Facebook's downfall at the moment. Like their their initial valuation was based off you know crazy growth projections. Like that's why they're valued so high because people expect them to grow so significantly. But well, they've kind of plateaued at this point, and they're also going down. Like this month was the first time their user count's gone down. I think. Yeah, I think yeah, the they were down by a million, million which, so, which isn't much. So it seems but... like their growth, but their growth period has ended. And if your entire valuation is based on, uh, you know, exponential growth, once that growth period ends, what 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 happens? Of course, your value is going to go down. Yeah, Facebook is slowly dying. Right? Isn't this just going to make it way worse? Heard it way There's more. nothing on it, dude. There's like no reason for say the, a new crop of users, a new bunch of like teenagers to discover your platform yeah. and get into it. Like, it's why all, would all a... people arguing with each other? And the it also serves is no... just gonna sign up for TikTok, not Facebook. Yeah, what it also serves no. Uh, it serves no specific purpose. So TikTok is short form video content. Instagram is for photos. YouTube is for videos. Fucking Twitter is for nonsense. But Facebook. It doesn't do anything specific. It just is. So why would I put anything Facebook's there? Facebook's purpose originally was connecting people, but yeah. now every app pretty much connects people. There's no people. point. I, I know where to go if I want certain things. And most internet users want certain things. They don't want to just hang out on the internet. They want to get something from it. So why would I go to Facebook? What's there? Oh, what do you do on Facebook? You watch videos? That's YouTube. You, you fucking post no, short little no. threads? That's Twitter. 
What do you do? Facebook is the, the one thing it's like known for as a niche is that you go on there and then your grandma will message you, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's, it's, which is something you want to avoid. Yeah. And I and I think that this is a good sign of kind of pushing back towards Internet anonymity. Because we had that whole social media revolution in like 2008 where everything became, no, put your full name <laughs> on. Social media revolution. Well, yeah, that's when Facebook <laughs> and MySpace and all these things started popping up and things became less anonymous on the Internet and more tied to your real identity. I, I personally fucking hate it, but everything on the Internet became tied to who you are. You know, Facebook was, oh, add a profile picture and tag yourself in this and add your friends and say what school you go to and all this stuff. But now platforms like Twitter and YouTube and this, that, they're way more anonymous. You can make a Twitter, call yourself whatever the fuck you want, do whatever you want on there. Instagram, same shit. So I think that's another mm -hmm. reason people are leaving Facebook. Facebook requires fucking driver's licenses in a lot of cases. And I think a lot of people don't want to do that shit because it sucks and it's stupid. Mm -hmm. People want to shit post anonymously. They want to put dumb shit on the Internet without consequence. Oh, dude, I fucking hate those. I hate that fucking garbage. The goddamn Britain, uh, British, those fucking bootlickers, they, they signed a petition to the government and 700,000 of them signed this uh, demanding that social media platforms have to ask you for an ID. It's like, so it's <laughs> yeah. to get rid of anonymous trolls. Like, if you're that butthurt by them, just turn the site off. How difficult is it to just block no, someone and move impossible. on with your fucking life? Kaya. No. Fucking you, assholes. No, you know, can't do that. No, come on. Turn off And then you have people making, media. like, trying to argue with them in good faith. Like, well, look, I know anonymous trolls are bad, but, you know, there's a lot of dissidents in, like, third world countries using Twitter anonymously, and, you know, it would really impact yeah. them the most. Blah, 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 blah. No, the fucking point is I want to, like, just shit talk anonymously. Let me. Why is that yeah. such a big fucking deal? Overall, social media and the new internet is a positive, but there's a lot of easy ways to negatively use it. But you shouldn't restrict it. It's it's a good thing. Like, yeah, like, who cares? Fucking every operating system since the dawn of time has already an anti-bullying system built into its graphical user interface. It's called the close button. It's a red <laughs> X. Top left, top right. <laughs> Fucking click it. <laughs> And even then, most platforms have muting and blocking. You don't have to talk to people who make your experience bad. That's it. Right. Well, they've already given you the bad experience when you feel like you need to move away. That's what's so troubling. Then move to a different community. If I'm on Twitter and I, I'm in a fucking <laughs> thread and people are like, Andrew, you eat poopy, haha. -ha, I can just go somewhere else on Twitter. I don't have to but friend those said, people. You, they, like, you can't take back yeah, seeing they already you've said seen that. poopy. Oh, God, yeah. you're right. Damn. Now That's your day issue. is ruined. Yeah. You need to like build a time machine or something. So really, the only solution is no one can say you eat poopy. <laughs> it's so fucking <laughs> dumb, man. And they're wasting actual like police resources on this shit too. Like on in fucking Britain again or Scotland and shit. If you like shit post something too hard and they snitch to you to the cops, they will show up to your house to question you. Mm -hmm. This keeps fucking happening. They will call you and they're really fucking sneaky about it too what the cops do they technically don't report it as a crime they call it a an incident which means it's still recorded it still goes into your permanent record with the police that you know there was a incident with you being rude to someone on social media but they just don't refer to it as a crime fucking fuck, clowns whatever I anyway, think this is a great step in the right direction where we're all going to be happier <laughs> and nicer to each other. Yeah. For fear of being arrested. <laughs> Let's get the gulags it is interesting open. That it is interesting that Facebook's pivot point is meta. Like that's what that that's their, you know, solution to this whole thing. Because they, they obviously saw the writing on the wall as well. Mm -hmm. You know, they knew that they were going to take this hit. Mm -hmm. this I'm, I'm all for it, man. I'm, I'm optimistic for Meta. Yeah, Facebook has a stink to it and it sucks. But if a giant company what? is only doing VR, I'm behind that. I'm excited to see what, what they do. I couldn't think of a worse company, honestly. I, but uh, yeah, I, yes, I can see that Facebook, you know, not great. Not a good name on it, but... They have so much money and resources and they're putting everything in the VR. Who knows what they could do with it? You know, could be a good step because it's going to yeah, bring competition. You know, they have. Yeah, that, that's that's a bad thing. If they have so much money and so much riding on this, they, they will beat this into the ground for money. But then they, they have, have competition to... if they're successful. 
What yeah, maybe, but what? you know, they have to bring in the young people if it's ever going to be good. If they don't find a way to bring in like anybody under fifty, it's just going to be boomer second life. Yeah, you know, they're going to which is just yeah. second life in general. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair uh, enough. Uh, but like, you know what I mean, though. Like, do you really want to play VR with your fucking grandma? And also, how are you going to get yeah. that many people on board because those VR headsets are fucking expensive? You know? Do you guys not like your grandmas or something? Mine's I dead, so I love it's her. It's the meme, Jackson. Like, nobody wants to go on Facebook and talk to their relatives that you see, like, once a year. Not grandma, then. Your fucking aunt or something. It's, you know, it's not what I go on social media for. I don't you know? hate my family, but I guess I'm in a fortunate position, I guess. Oh, well, well, make a Facebook play... account, then. I don't know what to yeah, tell do you. you. <laughs> do you play games with your grandma? Like, how active are you, like, co oping Dark Souls with Mima? I would, I would if you could deal with it. I'd love that. That'd be so cool. You wouldn't You wouldn't play Dark Souls with your grandma, Charlie? Oh, I think that'd be great. That'd be, I mean, that'd be fucking lit. Absolutely. But it wouldn't be Dark Souls. It'd be, like, Candy Crush. Like, all right, let's get the fucking... Let's no, going. but I'm saying it in an ideal world. What we'd... we'd you know, play games that we're both interested in, I suppose. Mm. So basically the ideal grandma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the perfect grandma. Mom, well, we need, a, we need a fifth for Valorant, grandma. What are you what what are you running? <laughs> what are you playing? <laughs> grandma, we need you on Sentinel. Yeah. Grandma, we need you to rotate B. There's, there's like some grandmas short, and there will be a lot of grandmas in the future that are gamers but I, not I, I if imagine. we don't Maybe push the years. technology I, I know Facebook sucks but hey they're doing something I like you know yeah but I really want to see how are they going to meet like, how are, again how are they going to distribute so many VR headsets if that's going to be their new shtick well they're getting, like, they're getting cheaper and cheaper though I mean the Quest yeah, 2 is what 350 cheaper. 400 dollars Compared to old school ones, they used to be way more. Like the index, if you want a high end one, is a thousand. But you know, you can get in there for yeah. Not but a you have to keep point. in mind, three hundred, four hundred is still a ton of fucking money for some like uh, you know yeah, countries out there. Free, but but the at the way. same time, like okay, so a Quest Two right now on Amazon for the cheapest model is three hundred dollars. That's less than a game console. You know, people yeah, buy people PlayStations they're, they're all they're the trying time. To build they're trying to build a future where everyone on Facebook is in the metaverse or whatever, you know, and that means all 2 billion people on Facebook need a metaverse thing. Yeah, you're not going to sell that so many VR they, headsets to that? like grandmas mm -hmm. and their nephews in Turkey in some village in Turkey, even though they may True. all have, you know, Facebook accounts, unless you make it some sort of a rental subscription thing where you get to have a headset for 14 bucks a month or something. Even then, you're, not just, you're just not going to convert everyone. You can't. Yeah, I, I don't, don't think this future is possible. I think we need to just give it time. I think eventually headsets will get cheaper. They'll get more convenient, and we'll That's we'll reach something. That's literally all we can give it. Yes, That's and and this is the first step. I mean, what if what if Facebook didn't do this? What are we doing with VR? We're not really bounding towards it. Yeah, we're working on it, but Facebook is the first giant company like this that is like we're only doing VR. You know, I still think mm. VR is seen pretty much. Out, out of like the enthusiast crowd, I think it's entirely seen as like a gimmick. Still is. I I think we're getting somewhere with it. I mean, I, the maybe they're not even like incredibly impressive. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they'll allow you to enter the metaverse even just on your desktop without mm -hmm. a headset. I'm sure. No, but why? And it'll just why be a classic game. Mm. Oh Christ! They well, have to like start someplace. I don't know. <laughs> why can't I be in control of the future? It'd be so much cooler. Fucking, I don't know what it would be, actually. It'd be worse. It'd be <laughs> yeah, worse. That's yeah. what I think, too. At this point, it's like my catchphrase. Every time I hear about NFTs, all I can think is I hate the future. I was supposed to have flying cars, not fucking NFTs. This blows. We're getting old, man. But what if NFTs pave the path for flying cars? It starts with Bored Apes now, but the technology, Kaya, yeah. we get to have a digital ledger. All we can... The sky's the oh, limit. Oh no! All the fucking uh, pollution put into the atmosphere is gonna start lifting the cars off the ground, Kaya. We got there <laughs> just in a different way. <laughs> yeah, I guess one, once we're all floating in seawater rising, that's yeah. technically off the ground, I guess. <laughs> yeah, floating cars. <laughs> Woohoo! These assholes are gonna put fucking cars on the blockchain, aren't they? I bet they will. Mm-hmm. Fucking douchebag. Bet your ass. <laughs> we, still uh, we still haven't fucking cured cancer either. We've been fighting that for like a hundred years. 
It's ridiculous. I can't believe that we haven't. But we can any, put like, it on the blockchain. I bet. Yeah, put cancer on the blockchain. We'll deal with yeah, it yeah. later. Cancer on the blockchain is literally NFTs. We've already got That's that. That's true. Zing. All right. Should we That's wrap? it for this week's episode. Yep. Thank you for watching this episode or listening to this episode if you're listening on Spotify. I uh, played around with a new setting last week. I added polls to our uh, audio upload so people could like vote on a poll that mm. I posted while they're listening. It was, is Pokemon, Arceus, yeah, is Pokemon Legends oh, Arceus yeah. any good? So I, I asked our audience what they thought. Uh, for, also, I think it was like 30% said uh, yes and the rest said no. No. <laughs> okay. The people have Another spoken. Another new Bad feature game. on Spotify, by the way. A couple of weeks ago, they introduced a rating system. So now you can give us five stars on Spotify, please. It'll literally only take you five seconds if you're already listening on Spotify. Take out your phone. Give us five stars. I yeah. hope it'll help. Don't do it if you're driving your Tesla and, and, or anything and feel like free that. To, Keep your eyes on the road. Feel free to rate us honestly as well, which means five stars. No, just five. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Five. <laughs> just go with your gut. Go with your gut. Five. You know, rate us honestly or dishonestly, whatever gets us first. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's everything. Patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes. What did we talk about last night with the bonus ghosts and shit? Uh, I think ghosts. ghosts yeah. 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 Ghosts and Jesus. Oh, oh it was like a, an entirely religious themed episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So if you're if if you're a very religious person, <laughs> you'll love what we have to say. So go check that out. We browsed our the atheism for an hour. Podcast. Just read the top yeah. headlines. It was great. We, uh, yeah, we agreed we put with it on our fedoras. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So go check that out. And to end this off, uh, big congrats to Charlie for 10 million subscribers. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Nutty. Yep. yep. Very big. Big boy. Congrats. Uh, yeah, that's it for this week. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Thank you.